Hey everyone, welcome to yet another Medical Terminology The Basics lesson, and this is lesson four, so let's begin. So we're going to first look at more modifiers in this lesson. So first we're going to begin by looking at location modifiers. So the first one is axio, which means axial. Uh, you can think of the axial skeleton in this case. The next one is cata. Uh, this means down or downward. The next prefix is ek, and you can think of outside, so think of ectopic. The next one is vent or ventro. This means toward the front, so you can think of ventral or the ventral surface of the body. And likewise, the opposite of that is dorso. Uh, you can think of the back or the back of the body, dorsum or dorsal. So here is a little quick picture here. Ventral again is toward the front, dorsal is toward the back. The next one is ladder or latero, and this really, uh, this really means relating to the side, so we can think of lateral. And the next one is cod or caudal, this means tail, so you can think of caudal in this case. So this might more relate to uh, the use in animals, but there are also times when we use the word caudal um, when we describe the human body as well. The next one is meso. And this simply means the middle. So you can think of mesoderm, that embryonic tissue layer that's in between endoderm and ectoderm. So meso means middle. So the next group of modifiers we're going to look at are cellular modifiers. The first one is karyo. Uh, this means nucleus. So you can think of karyotype. And another way to say nucleus is simply nucleo. So you can think of nucleophagy or um, the nucleopore. You can think of the nucleus in these cases. So karyo and nucleo both refer to the nucleus. The next one is poikilo. Uh, poikilo means variation or irregularity. So poikilo, um, you can think of in zoology, poikilotherms. Uh, in uh, with regards to cells, you can think of poikilocytes. So there's um, cells that have varying shapes. The next one is reticulo. Uh, this can refer to a reticulocyte. A reticulocyte is an immature red blood cell. And another cellular modifier is the prefix sphero. Uh, this is very easy. It just refers to the shape of a sphere. So again, there are cells known as spherocytes. So this would simply mean that they have a shape of a sphere. So the next set of medical terms we're going to look at are general terms. The first one is anthropo, so the prefix anthropo. This simply means the human race. So you can think of anthropology. The next one is corpore or corporo. This means body or relating to the body. So we can think of corporeal. Another uh, prefix that, or prefix and actually suffix that refers to um, the body is somato and soma. So, so you can think of somatic, or um, in some cases we refer to neurons, um, the body of a neuron as a soma. The next prefix is organo. Uh, this is easy. This means organ. So you can think of organomegaly, an enlarged organ. And related to that, viscero, this means internal organs. So you can think of viscera. The next one is chelo. This means tissue. So we can think of keloid in this case. The next prefix is proteo. This is easy. Again, this just means protein or relating to a protein. The next prefix is pharm or pharmaco. Again, this is quite um, well known. This means drugs or medications. You can think of pharmacy, you can think of pharmacist, you can think of pharmacology. All of these relate to drugs and medications. The next medical term is morpho. This means denoting form or structure. So you can think of morphology in this case. The next prefix is nutri or nutrio. This means relating to nutrition 
or to nourish. So we can think of new. Uh, you can think of a nutritionist. It's relating to an uh, relating to nutrition. So we have even more general terms coming up. So here's another one, the prefix physio, uh, which means nature. You can think of um, a physiotherapist. The next one is lumen or lumino. This means light. And you can think of the word lumen or illuminate. So these are all referring to light. The next prefix is nomen. This means name. And you can think of the word nomenclature. The next one is gnome or nomo. Uh, this means custom or law. The next one is spectro. This simply means spectrum. This is a pretty easy one to remember. So you can just think of that exact word spectrum. The next one is the suffix type, which simply means class. So you can think of somatotype, a class of body shape. The next one is the prefix techno. Uh, this simply means skill. So uh, you can think of technique when you think of this prefix. The next prefix is vir or viro. This simply means virus. So this is very easy one to remember. You can think of a virologist, uh, someone that specializes in viral research or viral infections. Another prefix is zygo, and uh, this actually means union or junction. So you can think of a zygote, so the union, in, uh, union of a sperm and egg becomes a zygote. So we'll look at some more prefixes and suffixes concerning conditions now. So first set we're going to look at are related to medical conditions. So we'll, we can think of myco. Uh, you can think of, when you hear myco, you can think of fungus. So you can think of a mycologist as someone that specializes in fungi. And you can think of mycosis. The suffix mycosis simply means a disease caused by fungus. You can think of onychomycosis, a nail infection caused by a fungus. The next one is onco, and this simply means cancer or relating to a tumor or mass. And you can think of an oncologist or oncology. The next suffix is uh, poesis. Uh, this simply means formation, and we typically think of poesis uh, when we think of the formation of blood, so hematopoiesis or thrombopoiesis, these all relate to formation of, of something. The next one is partum. Uh, this means birth or labor. So you can think of prepartum or postpartum. So postpartum just means after birth or after labor. The next one is sanit. Uh, this simply means uh, health. So you can think of sanitation or sanitary. So the next set of conditions are uh, just general conditions. So the first uh, prefix is calorie. Uh, this means heat. So you can think of a calorie. It's a, just simply a unit of heat. The next one is uh, the suffix coma. And we all know what that word means. And that just simply means um, a deep sleep. The next one is gymna or gymno. This means naked. And the next one is vito. Um, this means life. So you can think of vitality when you think of this uh, prefix. So the next set of prefixes and suffixes relate to processes and modifiers. So the first one is acu. Uh, this means needle. So you can think of acupuncture. The next one is Anomalo, uh, you can think of abnormal or irregular. You can think of anomaly or anomalous. Another prefix is barrow. This simply means weight or pressure. You can think of a barometer, something that measures pressure. The next one is dinia. This uh, means pain or relating to pain. So you don't hear this one too often, but you can think of allodynia. The next one is dynamo. This is um, 
may be more familiar to many people. This one means strength or power, so dynamic. The next one is equi. Uh, this means equal or equality. So very easy to remember. So equi just simply means equal or equality. Another prefix is et or edio. This means cause or relating to the cause. So this um, you can think of etiology, the etiology of a medical condition would be the cause of that medical condition. The next prefix is iono. Um, you can think of ion in this instance. Uh, another uh, suffix is labile. This means uh, unstable or fragile. Another one is lio. This means loosen or dissolve. And uh, the prefix radio means radiation. So you can think of radiotherapy, a treatment or a therapy involving radiation. And another one is sclera. Um, this means hardening or thickening. So you can think of sclerosis or atherosclerosis. These all relate to hardening or thickening of something. So the next set of um, processes and modifier terms starts with skiro. Uh, this means hard. They can think of like hard as a rock. So skiro or skiris is another uh, word you might hear in medicine, skiris. The next one is schisto. This means fissure or split, a schistocyte, for instance. And another one is schisis, the suffix schisis. Uh, this means cleft or split. Schizo um, denotes a split or a division. You can think of schizophrenia in this case. So another suffix is lucent. This means light emitting. So a word you can think of is translucent or translucency. So trans means across. Lucent means light emitting. So Translucent simply means light emitting across something, so it's translucent. Another prefix um, that's important is tumesco or um, tumesque. This means uh, swelling, and uh, another word that means swelling is tumescence, so this can um, be added on to other things, but the word itself, tumescence, actually means swelling. Another prefix that's important is tempo, and this relates to time. So you can think of, in music, you want to keep a tempo, so it's relating to time. Or you can think of the word temporal. Um, phoria, the suffix phoria, means feeling or relating to a feeling. So you can think of euphoria, or you feel euphoric, you feel very content, very happy. The next one is physis or physis. This means growth or relating to growth. So you can think of the words epiphysis or diaphysis. And another prefix is samo um, or samo. This means sand-like quality or uh, sand-like material. Now that we've learned all of those prefixes and suffixes, uh, let's put them to practice. So the first example is anthropomorphic. So anthropomorphic. So again, when we look at a medical term, we just want to break it into pieces that uh, into pieces that we actually recognize. The first one um, we can do in this word is we can break it into anthropo. And what does anthropo mean? Well, it means human race. So then if we look at the rest of the word, we can find another piece of that word that we might recognize, morph. And morph means denoting form or structure. And ik, ik, is uh, really means pertaining to. So when we put it all together, what does it mean? Well, it means pertaining to a former structure of the human race. So it kind of sounds odd, but really this word means having human characteristics. So it is pertaining to something that resembles a human. That's what anthropomorphic means. The next example is baroreceptor. So you might recognize receptor. That's very easy. That's an actual word. But what does baro mean? Baro, if we remember in this lesson, it means pressure. And again, receptor just means receptor. So this baro receptor really is a pressure receptor. And a lot of times it's something to do with our blood pressure. There are baro receptors in our body that monitor our blood pressure. 
The next example is dysphoria. So again, just break it down into pieces. So first part of this word, we might have heard this before, dis. Dis means a problem or something that is abnormal. And when we look at phoria, we learn that phoria means feeling or relating to a feeling. So when we put it together, it literally means there's some abnormal or problem or a negative feeling. And it really actually means a state of unease. The next practice word is radiolucent. So what does radiolucent mean? If you break it down again, radio, radio means radiation. And lucent, lucent means light emitting. So when we put that together, it means, um, it literally means light emitting radiation. That really doesn't make much sense unless we think about um, using an x-ray. So an x-ray, there's radiation used, and it's something that's transparent on an x-ray. So the next practice word is hematopoiesis. So again, break it down. So hemato, we might think of words like hematologist. So what does hemato mean? Hemato means blood. And the suffix poesis, what does that mean? Well, we learned that that meant formation. So when you put it together, hematopoiesis means formation of blood. So that's a very easy one. And the last one is scleroderma. So what does scleroderma mean? So again, breaking it down, sclero. Sclero means hardening or thickening. And derma, you can think of dermatologist. So derma means skin or relating to the skin. So when you put this together, scleroderma really means a condition of a hardening or thickening of the skin. So scleroderma means hardening or thickening of the skin. Anyways, guys, that was the end of lesson four of medical terminology, the basics. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.